I want to share um, a focus area that the Hong Kong team has been working on together with our partner uh, networks across uh, these specific countries. So uh, we work with networks of churches and Christian organizations in Nepal, Myanmar, Cambodia, the Philippines, Hong Kong, and we're developing new partnerships in Thailand, Sri Lanka, Hong Kong as well. And so these are, as you know, uh, networks of uh, organizations and churches that work in some of the most vulnerable communities and volatile environments, including uh, the refugee camps. And over the past two years, they've each had to navigate um, the impacts of COVID in a very unique environment of their countries, but also there have been some cross-cutting and common themes. Um, and one of them that I want to talk about today is the impact of COVID on children's education and, and the ripple effects of that on their well being and safety. So, as Lucy mentioned, and very briefly, UNICEF has just published a new research uh, that states that about 400 million children are still impacted by the uh, school closures around the world. And what this means, including the academic and developmental mental health side of things, is that they're becoming less safe because schools often work as environments that are protective for vulnerable children. And so the disruption to that is putting them at higher risk um, of um, human trafficking, child labor, and early marriage. And the unequal access to education means that a lot of these children don't have access to computers and are really falling behind. The risk of that being that a lot of them are not going to be able to return to school or stay in school. And so UNICEF is saying, oh, we have a crisis here. We have a crisis of a whole generation of children that we might actually not be able to catch them, to protect them and uh, to keep them in education. And so they have published five main points calling to the uh, world governments, leaders, faith groups to cover these main points, reach and retain every child in school, assess learning levels, prioritize teaching the fundamentals, increase catch up learning and progress, develop psychosocial health and well being. And I'm very excited to share today with you that Viva has been working for more than eight years on programs around supporting children in education to stay in school and to continue the education. And over COVID, we have developed some very unique uh, interventions to support the psychosocial and mental health aspect as well, working with parents and uh, with children. And we have, we are ready, as this research came out, we can say we are ready to cover all of those main points in a program called the Learning Spaces. So I don't, I can't take too much time, but I'm going to briefly introduce this program to you. And it's a 12 month program that is targeted for the most vulnerable children and families. Uh, it is often run through a, from a local church, um, bringing children into a, a learning space um, um, and supporting them throughout the week, both in the education side, in the catch-up learning and homework, um, but also very importantly in the psychosocial support and mental health well-being activities. And these are really quite simple, straightforward activities, but they're helping children to put words to what they have experienced and process the trauma of the disruption and loss that COVID has brought. Uh, the wonderful part of this is the sustainability aspect. So uh, we are basing it not only from, you know, coming in, but we're working with local mentors. Our local partners are experts in their communities. They know the needs and we are able to come alongside and resource them with cutting edge education research. And so we're focusing, you know, on elements such as growth mindset, independent learning skills um, that are quite revolutionary for some of these environments. And these relationships that are formed, the mentor relationships are going to be there way past the program. And so this is quite the exciting part for us as well. 
The other thing I want to say is that there are also wonderful platforms, these learning spaces to engage community and parents. So this isn't only about working solely with children because they don't exist in silo, but to support the whole family and community structure and give training on good parenting skills, on human trafficking prevention and other very important trainings. Um, the evidence that we've gathered so far is very encouraging. Um, and it's showing that children who are in learning spaces um, at times have had 100% return to school right when the school reopened, which is wonderful. That's just incredible in these uh, some of these areas. And they've also had a 100% pass rate to the next grade. So it is showing that a support like this is able to keep children coming back to school. And that's what I think is very exciting. And it really does address the need that was mentioned by UNICEF. Um, so I know this was quite fast. It was a very brief overview, but I hope this gave you an idea and we're very happy to talk to you more if you have any thoughts or questions. But I'm going to leave you with three main prayer points. We want to reach more vulnerable children. That's the main one and, uh, and communities. And so we pray for, for uh, resources to do that well. We want to pray for dedicated and equipped local experts to work with because they are they are our main asset really and um, please pray for protection over children and staff in each of these uh, schools so thank you very much